want to start with this line of yours on the Fed, that they have to get back to neutral, get restrictive and do it a little bit more quickly. Can you put some numbers on that, Mark? What do you think neutral is and where's restrictive? Well, John, we, we think the Fed will get to about two and a half to three over the next year or so. I think that's roughly neutral, maybe slightly restrictive, but we've got a global inflation problem. You mentioned it this morning, German inflation up 7.8%, U.S. inflation 8.5%. So basically the Fed is playing and other central banks are playing catch up. The good news is that the market is pricing in a lot of these rate hikes, but we really are um, in a situation where inflation is still significantly above trend. The labor market's as tight as it's been in basically two decades, and inflationary expectations are picking up. So this is a Fed and other central banks that frankly have to act and act quickly. And the good news is that next uh, week in six days, we're probably gonna get 50 basis point hikes. Remember, we haven't seen that in 22 years. So clearly, you know, catch up is taking place and they, they have a long way to go. Mark, the market seems to be primed for that. That's what we're expecting, a 50 basis point move, another one, maybe even another one and another one. As you indicate, once you get into the twos on Fed funds, I think that's where the uncertainty is, Mark. Can you walk me through what's shaping you and the team's thoughts on where you think it goes next? How do you come to that calculation? Well, Jonathan, there's obviously a tremendous amount of uncertainty, particularly given the fact that you've got the war in uh, Ukraine, you've got the COVID lockdowns in Shanghai and China. So obviously, there's a market with a lot of uncertainty. But I would say the risks are that inflation will persist uh, perhaps even longer. Um, just because this, this supply chain constraints have you know, continued to linger. If you look at the labor market, you know, there, are, there are significantly more job openings than unemployed. The ratio is 1.8. Um, this is a very, very tight labor market. If you look at companies, they're passing through these higher prices. What shows up on the earnings in the first quarter, very strong consumer, significant pent up demand to travel. And, and most importantly, I think is the pass through. I think that's the inflation risk that the Fed has to get ahead of is that companies are facing these higher prices food energy labor costs shipping they're passing them through and so that's what that's why inflationary expectations have the risk of going higher they really do need to get ahead of this Mark you've got a fund to run your cash position has been pretty elevated can you help me understand where that is now relative to say six months ago three months ago one month ago how's that changed well, Jonathan, we've been we've been talking for seven months now, and every time we talk, I, I I've been saying we've been redu reducing credit risk. We've been reducing for seven seven months, and we've been building up this cash. And the the logic has been that we really have felt um, the Fed and other central banks around the world, Australia, uh, Bank of England, the ECB, the Fed, all of these central banks need to get. Uh, rates higher quicker because of lingering inflation and that would in turn tighten financial conditions put headwinds on equities and credit markets so you know we 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 think we've made the right call to to get ahead of this and to really build up a, a big cash position our cash positions are quite high right now we've also been very defensively positioned on rates so we've been underweight duration so we feel like we're in a very strong position of strength but we are expecting a lot more choppy markets more volatility given these central banks have yet to move. Uh, so they're going to start, they've got a lot of catch up, but this is going to create a lot of volatility in markets. How do you reconcile that view with where you like in a credit market? Because last time we spoke, you were talking about the consumer, the airlines, hotels, entertainment and credit. Mark, if I'm thinking about a tighter monetary policy stance from the Fed and elsewhere, inflation being more persistent, can a consumer remain that resilient with that backdrop? Well, the consumer, uh, Jonathan, got a lot of support from the government. Um, they're sitting on $2 trillion of excess savings. Unemployment rate is 3.6%. Wages are growing. It's the tightest labor market we've seen in 20 years. Uh, the consumer, 68% of the economy, very difficult to get a recession when the consumer is this healthy. And if you talk to companies, they're your leading indicator. They will tell you this consumer has got a lot of pent up demand. Companies are able to pass through those higher prices and consumers are paying it. Look at airlines, look at hotels, lodging, apartment REITs. So the fact is, is that the on the ground evidence suggests that this consumer is pretty resilient. And so that's where we have invested. It's also the sector because 
because of this pent-up demand, because we've been in lockdown, and now you're going to free up a lot of services spending, that's where we think the biggest earnings growth is going to be, and also where the best credit improvement trends are likely going to occur over the next year or so. So we have been favoring airlines. We've been favoring lodging. We also like banks' financials and also apartment rates because they can reset those rents every month. So as inflation goes up, they're getting higher revenue on that, that new lease. Where are you uncomfortable taking credit risk? Well, what we've been selling, Jonathan, over the last seven months has been cyclicals. So outside of services and the consumer, most cyclicals we've been reducing. Um, also with energy prices where they are now, uh, no one can predict where they're going in the future, but a lot of that credit improvement is, is in the past. So basically getting cyclical risk down, getting, getting um, a lot of subordinated credit risk down, and, and basically sitting in cash, sitting in the COVID recovery sectors, and also in non-cyclical uh, defensive sectors. So defense sector, cable, telecom, healthcare, pharmaceuticals, utilities. Those are the areas we like right now. Mark, just how big is that cash position? Jonathan, it's it's up to 10, 12 percent. So we, we are quite defensively positioned. Um, we are anticipating uh, the potential uh, volatility to hit markets as central banks, not just the Fed. Remember, it's a global inflation phenomenon. This is not just about the United States. Yep. Inflation is surprising high everywhere. So when this tightening of financial conditions hits, um, it really is going to be a catalyst for a slowdown in economic growth. And, and you could even see a recession in Europe as early as next year. Uh, and recession risk in the U.S. for next year are rising. So that's why we have been so defensive. Mark, there's one place you didn't mention, Japan. And it's on our radar this morning in a much bigger way. The BOJ is committed, it says it's committed, to capping interest rates on a 10-year JGB at 0.25%. The Ministry of Finance, for whatever their words are worth, are saying they're uncomfortable, concerned with what's happening in the FX market. Mark, can I just finish with getting your view on what's happening, developing in Japan at the moment, and where you and the team are at on that particular story, where you think something might break, something might give? Well, obviously, rates have been extremely low in Japan for, for decades and decades, and a lot of that is demographics. Um, and their labor market isn't quite as tight as the United States. But nevertheless, again, this, this inflation issue is a global issue. So they're going to face higher inflation, particularly with a weaker, weaker yen. Uh, so over time, I think those rates obviously are, are too low as well. So in general, these developed markets, when you're whether you're looking at the U.S., Europe, U.K., Australia, uh, Japan, all those rates are likely going to go higher over time.